So let's now do an example after quite a lot of theory. So the example is a barn stop filter. implemented as as an FIR filter. And so the motivation is or the example here is motivation remove 50 Hertz. It's one of the most important tasks in filtering to get rid of 50 Hertz mains. So for this reason I've got here this um, ECG already loaded. So this I just called this ECG 50 Hz or DAT and got 4000 samples out of that. And so let's just plot this again here and get this on the screen. So this looks already quite 50 Hz polluted. So if you zoom in into this here, you see here quite a lot of 50 Hertz showing up here. So what we would like to do is we would like to get rid of this 50 Hertz here. So in order to do that, so in order to do this now, we need to calculate our impulse response. So what is the impulse response of a 50 Hertz notch filter. So before we do this, so we start with that, that we just draw our ideal response. So it was our step number one. So here we've got omega. That's H to E to J omega. And our ideal response looks like that. And it ends here at pi. So let's call this here omega 1 and omega 2. In order to make this real, we also need to have a mirror here, which is going up to minus pi. So in here we've got then minus omega 1 and minus omega 2. So what we need to do is we just need to calculate the inverse Fourier transform of this. So 1 over 2 pi, and then the inverse Fourier transform runs from minus pi to plus pi, and then e2 j omega, e2 j omega n d omega. So now, if we just set this function here just to 1 or to 0, then this function here is um, either 1 or 0. So this means this this integral can be just split up in three integrals where this factor is just 1. So split up into three integrals. So let's do that. Let's just quickly draw our frequency response a bit smaller here, not to waste so much space. So this was here omega 2, omega 1, minus omega 1, and minus omega 2. So this was our h, and this is here our omega, and this runs to pi, and this runs here to minus pi. Okay, so this was our response. And so then we can write h of n now as 1 over 2 pi. And now the first integral runs from minus pi to minus omega 2. So that's this, this part here. e2 j omega n d omega. So that's the first part. Plus, so now the next part is this one here. So this runs from minus omega 1 to plus omega 1, e2j 
omega in d omega. And so then the last part is here from omega 2 till pi, 2 pi, so omega 2, 2 pi, e to j omega n d omega. So that's essentially all. So now we just need to solve this integral here. So this gives us here 1 over 2 pi and I'm going to leave a bit more space here. So now the integral, obviously the integration of e to j omega n gives us again e to j omega, j omega n, but because of the of the chain rule here, so we, we need to be careful here that we have this j and the n here, which is getting us a 1 over j n, so we can directly write this in here. Yeah, so that's because of the chain rule. And then this runs here from minus pi to minus omega 2, and then we've got the same here for e2 j omega n, and this runs from minus omega 1 to plus omega 1, and then we've got the same here again, and then this runs from omega 2 to till pi. So then now we just need to need to substitute this here and then this gives us here the following equation pi n and then we've got here e2 minus j omega 2 n plus e2 j omega 1 n minus e2 minus j omega 1 n minus e2 j omega 2 n and um, then we just need to take care of this of this pi and the minus pi here so this gives us then e2 j pi n minus e2 minus j pi n. So it just fits in here. Okay, so now if we just reshuffle these things a bit, we see that this one here, this just gives us a um, sign of omega 1 n. So then we've got here, here this one, these two terms here. So they they give us sine of omega 2n or actually minus minus sine of omega 2n because we've got here this um, sine inversion here. Um, and then this one here is an interesting part here. This gives us sine of pi n and this is obviously always zero, yeah. So therefore, we can forget about this here in this case. So now we can just um, rewrite this with our signs. So now our impulse response h of n is then one over pi n sine of omega one n minus sine of omega 2n plus sine of pi n and we already concluded that this one is zero. So that's that works now very well for n not zero, otherwise we are getting a division by zero here. So so what do we do for n equals zero? And there there's a handy rule by L'Hopital. which means that the limits of f von x over g von x over towards one of these these division by zero is then limits of f derivative divided by g derivative of x and exactly this we have here so we've got our n here our n is our g 
or this function here. This is our g of x essentially and this these functions here they are our f of x. In this case we cannot omit this this function here because the derivative of the sine is a cosine. So therefore we need to also take care of that. Um okay so we've got the h of zero here. So this gives us then one over pi, yeah, so that's a derivative of that. And then we've got here cosine of omega one n omega one. Again, this is a chain rule. And then we're subtracting the cosine of omega two n omega two plus cosine of pi n multiplied by pi. Again, chain rule here, that's the same idea. So so now we have this in this essentially the n is zero, so this means that is one over pi and then this one here is just one, so this means it's omega one minus omega two plus pi. And then obviously the pi also cancels out with with that here. So then we can rewrite this in a nicer form as one minus and then and then here omega two minus omega one divided by pi, which is for h equals zero our result. So then we've got this, this defined for h of zero and this of uh, for h of one, h of n, and now we can just create directly our filter in MATLAB. So we had our noisy ECG here. Just have a look here. So we've got our sine wave here in this ECG. So what we need to define is now our two cutoff frequencies here. So cut off frequencies so in, let's define this in real world terms here and so that we say this is here f1 and this is here f2 and we are setting that f1 is 45 hertz and f2 is 55 hertz so our our fs is one kilohertz as usual and we should be writing this as capital fs here because these are still analog frequencies so then our f1 is f1 divided by fs and then our f2 in normalized frequencies is capital f2 divided by capital fs so we can directly define this in MATLAB like that. So let's bring this here here back up. Here we go. And so let's define f f1 as 45 divided by 1000. That's our sampling rate, and f2 55 divided by 1000 as well. So just by moving this here a bit over. So and then we've got these two functions defined. So now let's define our impulse response. Impulse response in MATLAB. Let's just write this h of n here again down here. So where we've got this there, h of n is one over pi n and then sine omega 1 n minus sine omega 2 n. So what we do in MATLAB, MATLAB is that this n here turns into a vector. Yeah, so that we're initializing this n from minus 200 to plus 200 for example. 
So this gives us then 401 tabs. And we're defining this nicely symmetrical that we're getting the mirror of our impulse response there. So we're defining our n like this and feeding this into this function here. So let's do that. So what we just need to do is um, so we're defining our n here as minus 200 to 200. So this gives us a vector n. So if I type this here in there, we see that this nicely counts there upwards. So now what we need to do is we just need to create our impulse response h here. That's a bit tedious, tedious writing. So n multiplied by pi. So that's this, that's this factor which we have here. So that's the one. So now we multiply this with sine of f1 and then we want to have this in omega 2 pi n. So that's our term there and then we're subtracting the, um, the second frequency from it f2 f multiplied by pi multiplied by n. So then we have got also the second one covered. Then we've got our h here. So let's have a look at our at our h and see how this how the plot looks like. Okay, so that's our impulse response here. So now the only problem is we've got the singularity here at um, 201 because we are getting our division here uh, at the index number 201 here. And so we need to take care take care of that. So we need to write 201 because of the MATLAB convention. So 1 plus f1 multiplied by by 2 multiplied by pi and then f2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi and then the whole thing divided divided by pi which is here could have directly omitted the pi here in, in our omega definition okay so let's plot this again and now we see now suddenly the, we've got this nice beautiful spike in the middle here which go and goes roughly up to one and then these wiggles on the side here. Okay, so that's our impulse response, h of n, yeah, so with, uh, with this middle part substituted. So this is what we see here, this is our h of n, our impulse response. So now we've got the, got the impulse response. So now the only thing what we what we now need to do is we just take our signal and filter it. Now filter the ECG with the impulse response. And we now for this we just use the command filter in MATLAB filter and the first argument is our h and the one we just ignore for, for now and then the third argument is our input here so it's a MATLAB command which we have already tried out with the moving average filter so let's do this so let's get y2 and and we filter this now is our impulse response one comma y and do a plot of y two and let's bring this here up and so now we see already this is here much cleaner so if I zoom in into this part here we see that the filter is working very well so we don't see any 50 hertz contamination in this ECG anymore. So that's completely removed. 